Right, hello and welcome to Team Cod Edge YouTube channel. My name's Matt Crow, and today I've come down to Dunwich in Suffolk to fish for flatfish using the plane or rolling lead method. Now I'll go through that a little bit later, but this beach at Dunwich, it's a shingle beach, uh, goes out into the sea, as you go out into the sea it becomes sandy bottom, the uh, dabs and flounders absolutely love it. There's there's no two ways about it, this is a good venue. I've walked right at the car park, gone underneath the cliffs, and my first cast now out. Lead's doing its job, Lead's trying to it along. It's only been out 10 minutes, not had a bite yet, so I'm gonna bring it in a little while and change the bait. I'll also go through the bait later with you, tell you what I'm using, but I hope you enjoy the video, and I hope I can get some fish on camera for you. Right, second cast, the uh, tide's flooding. I prefer to fish the tide on the flood because my theory is as the tide pushes up, all them little fat fish will be following the tide up. Every little bit of sand, every bit of shingle, every bit of ground that's covered by the water, they'll be in there and they'll be picking off all the little bits that are coming up through the sands, you know, just coming out as the water covers it. Little bits of worms, little bits of food, they'll be on there, they'll be hammering and hammering it, and they won't be far out. I've seen dabs picked up 15 yards out before by people. You know, someone's unhooked the fish, plonked their rig in the water in front of them while they unhooked the fish, and the tip started going, and then there's dabs there, you know? But, like I say, sit and cast. Getting a couple of rattles. Just going to leave it in there, see if I can pick up a double shot. Bait wise today, nothing extravagant at all. If anything, the less extravagant, the better for flatfish. You can have your maddies, you can have your silvers, all well and good. But I know a good bait for dabs is old black lug or blow lug. Let it go off, smelly, stinky, put it in there. Them dabs are scavengers, they'll love it. They'll get on it and that'll just that'll be like caviar to them. They'll be absolutely annihilating it. And like I say, all I'm using is bits of black lug, two hook flappers, two, one for each hook. Two bits. This is frozen blacks I took out of the freezer yesterday. Let it defrost. They've been in there a little while. Not the best, most newest bait, but like I say, flatfish will like the older bait. Frozen uh, blacks, obviously they're floppy when they defrost, so all I do is chop them to size, thread the floppy bits onto a baiting needle, and then bind with elastic. Obviously make it neat, you don't want to make it unneat with bits of elastic hanging off here and there because if the water's not very coloured, it might put the fish off. I'm not saying it will, but it might. In my eye, bait presentation is one of the most key things for fishing. If my bait's not presented right, I'm not confident. If I'm not confident, I'm not going to catch. It's quite simple. So make sure your bait is neat and tidy. The way I look at it is if I look at that and think, yeah, that's tidy, that's neat. The fish will come along and they will absolutely wolf it down, hopefully. But you never know. And like I say, all I'm doing, sliding that on the hook, and then a little tiny sliver of squid onto the hook. Size four hooks today, wormer hooks I'm using. Little tiny sliver of squid on that. So as it flaps around, that little tiny flap of squid, you've got the centre of the black lug, and the little flap of squid, even though it's giving off a little bit of scent, that'll be flapping in the tide. Little white bit, whether it represents a small white ragworm, I do not know. But that little bit of extra movement, any fish in the area, their attention will come to that. They'll come over, they'll smell the black lug, they'll look at that and they'll just be smash it. Tip will go around, Bob's your uncle, you've got a fish on. But yeah, oh, there we go, lovely little bite there, could be a flatty. Uh, I'm going to reel it in and see what I've got. So, let's hope it's a fish and not a crab. Right, next, it's going to take you through the rigs I'm using and take it through using a plain lead or a rolling lead. Like I say, the rolling lead, devastating for most of the flatfish family, if not all the flatfish family. They're inquisitive fish. If they see something moving, if they see sediment being tucked up from the bottom as the lead rolls over and kicks it up, they'll come over, they'll see what it is, they'll find your bait, and in theory, 
your catch. Right, like I say, rigs today, all I'm using today is bog standard, two hook flappers, 10 pound red snoods, red line, for some reason I like using red line for flatties, just personal preference due to the colour spectrum in the water. In my, I think, if I remember rightly, red is the first colour to disappear in water or something like that, so that will disappear, I'll just leave in your hook bait. And size, size four hooks, Wormer style. And on the lead end, I'm using a rolling lead. Now these plain leads come in many guises, loads of different ones. The ones I use are from Takana. This is one of the newer Takana star leads. Now this is 100 grams. Cast it out, best used on a sandy bottom. I'd say it's sandy out there, that sits, sits lovely, gives you a bit of grip and a bit of tide run, but it will also roll along the bottom, trundle along, moving that, moving that bait. The other one I'm using a finned aero lead, that's more cylindrical shape, that's got fins on it as that rolls over, the fins kick up the, uh, kick up the bottom. But this star lead, this is the one I've just been getting bites on, didn't hit enough, I had some lovely bites on it. Lovely whack rounds, but then hooks. So I've obviously I've second cast. I've already bought the bait size down because if they're going to be finicky feeders, that's what you need to do. Uh, leave more hook points shown. But yeah, this one, like I say, it rolls along, moves that bait, moves that lead. Hopefully, gets the flatfish interested. Cast up tide. That will go up tide. That will hit the bottom, and as the tide runs, that will trickle round slowly but surely. Dig in a little bit, bit more tide run, bit of movement, that will trundle along, it'll move. Cast up tide, obviously the lead will arc across in front of you. Don't bring it up, don't bring your rod up tight to it because if you bring your line up tight, instead of going across, that's tight, that will come down like that and that will come in shallow. So you cast out, let a bit of lead out, and that tide will arc that lead round, boom, 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 all the way across in front of you. Gets down there, and hopefully you should get a bite on the way around. Don't strike at every single rod tip movement you see, because obviously that, that lead's moving. That tip will bobble, that'll bounce, you know, it might pull around and then just flick back as it loses its grip. But you will know when you've got a bite, you know, you have the old movements like that. If you get a flatfish bite, that'll, that'll bang around. You know, the ones I'm getting at the minute, I don't think they're white and bites. White and just bang, bang, as usual. These are nice little trembles, little tugs, tremble, tremble, tugs. So they're out there, like I say, just hopefully reducing this, uh, Reducing the bait size, we'll get one, but we'll see. It's a lovely day for it, though. Non existent southwesterly wind blowing from behind me up the beach. That sea is flat calm. If you're going to go fishing for flatfish, these conditions you couldn't get any better. So we'll see. Should be alright. Like I say, tide's flooding. Hopefully, push that water in a bit more and they'll come on the feed properly. But we'll see what happens. Right. Yeah, look, it's got the first one of the day. Only a little tiny postage stamp, but pretty little fish all the same. It's what I'm after. Now, a bit bigger than this, and numbers will be better. Getting a few bites, reducing that bait size. First cast after I reduced the bait size, because I was putting bigger baits on. It's worked a treat. He's come along. Obviously, plain lead. Trundled round. And this little cracker came along and decided to munch down on the bait. So I'll get him on, get him released, and see if we can get some more fish. Right, what I've done is I've been getting bites on the close inside one, probably sort of 30, 40 yards out. Um, obviously, I have one dab, missed some more. Every cast, I'm getting nice bites, but not connecting with them, unfortunately. So I've just plonked one out further, and I found a bit of tide run. It's now trundling around there nicely. And, even more of a bonus, going through my bucket just now, got to add these in there, two Yorkies. Took them out on a session a couple of weeks ago, they've been sitting in my bucket ever since. Sealed up, I don't care, I'll munch them. I was sitting there thinking to myself, I could do with some chocolate. I'll just have a look in my bucket. Man chocolate, Yorkies. Eee. But yeah, um, munch this. See what happens, it's working well, just want some more fish, really like I say it's flooding still, it's coming up so hopefully once it touches the top of that shingle and there's a bit of depth of water there, there might be some more fish. We'll see, I'll say there's bites, I might even have to take the hook size down in a minute to size 6 or size 8, 
really go tiny with the bites so they're going to be really finicky. But we'll see what happens. I'll give it a couple of casts and see if I can get anything else. And uh, if I start picking them up, then obviously I won't change anything. But we'll see what happens. Right, I'm going to enjoy this. Yeah, I had a little friend come and sit with me. Decided to name him Stephen. Stephen Seagull. Eating like king at the minute, just out of my blooming. 3 99 triple bacon SO garage special. Robin, well, I wouldn't like to say they are really. Charge that much for a sandwich. I could have made that with about 50p at home. But like I say, he's loving life at the minute. He's enjoying himself. Bacon and egg sandwich down him. Just want these dabs to start getting these blacks and squid down. Add another one. Second one of the day. They're not the biggest. But they're good sport, giving lovely little bites. Beautiful little fish, really. Absolutely beautiful little fish. Tiny little things. I hope the stamp increases, to be honest with you, because this stamp is like stamps, to be honest with you. Tiny little things. You never know, it might be something there. Hopefully, a big few bigger ones will come along, but we'll see. Nice to see some, though, to be honest with you. First time I targeted them this year, and it's a lovely, clear, sunny day, and the rolling lead is working, it's picking them off. So, let's just hope there's some larger ones there. There you are, let's just add another little dab. Small little ones here at the minute, they're tiny. There's no. Um, Nice stamp to them whatsoever. I don't even know what size they are. I'm not even going to bother measuring them, to be honest with you. But pretty little things, and it's nice to see. I just hope there's some bigger ones out there. You never know, they might come through. But the rolling leads work, and it's trundling them around, picking them off. So we'll keep chugging along and see if we can get some better ones on camera. You never know. I'm just getting bites. Got another bite now. The tip's rattling around, so another little tiny dab, I reckon. Plucking away at the little bit of squid that's hanging off the bottom of the black. But yeah, let's see what happens. Have a little dab. That one's obviously been feeding on the flood side. You can see how fat his little belly is. But they're not massive. Lovely sport though. It's nice to catch something different to whiten, to be honest with you. That's all we've been having down here recently is whiten. I've been looking forward to these little beauties turning up and they're slowly coming. I'll tell you what would be nice. It'd be nice to get a flounder now, to be honest with you, because you do get flounders around here. I know I'm wishing for bigger dabs than flounders. It might be a bit much, but... You know, I've done the dabs, now I had dabs today, I'd love to get a flounder. I think I'd be the only other species we get, maybe a schoolie, you never know, but... Yeah, I'm going to get him unhooked and put him back. And uh, see what else comes along. Coming thick and fast now. Another lovely little dab. They turned on, the more the tides come up, the uh, more the fish are turned on the feed. It's pretty frantic now, I'm putting it out and I'm getting bites fairly quickly still no double shots though and still no white in which I'm very very happy about but they're absolutely loving this rolling lead flappers and blacks tip with squid they're hammering it good bites good fish and more importantly fun to be honest with you I'm gonna put this back and keep going and see if I can get some more it's great fun to add to the collection still the average size is fairly small but it's good fun still getting bites it's getting a bit colder though the old uh, sun's going down so temperatures dropping but you never know now it gets a bit darker there might be some better fish come on the feed so we'll carry on 
Right, still plugging away. Flicked that last one out about 20 yards. Still getting the little ones. But that last cast, that rod slack line, went off down tight before I had a bass. But I found their daddy. Look at that, look, 30 centimeters. What an absolutely cracking dab. That is an absolute beauty. Look at him. That is a stonker of a dab, really. Don't really see him that big. Cool. Like I say, slack line, we took me off down tide. Absolute brilliant fish. Thought it was a flounder when it first came through till I checked the lateral line. Always check a dab on the lateral line because there's like a D shape. Uh, well, just uh, you run up towards the head, the uh, lateral line curves out. And look at him, 30 centimeters. What an absolute stonker. Hopefully get another one like this, I'm going to keep trying, but that's made my day to be honest with you. It really has, especially on camera. I think that's my biggest dab, personal best. What a fish. Right, I just had one of my mates turn up to talk to me. While he was here I had a bite, had my first white another day. Thought he'd cursed me a little bit, thought he'd brought him with him. But he hasn't, next cast yet again. Another lovely little dab. Average size, same size as the ones we were getting earlier. But it's getting darker now, so I expect the whiting to come on the feed, to be honest with you. But I've had a lovely day, caught a few dabs. I'm going to keep going for a little while yet, though, see if I can get some more. But yeah, it's been a good day. I'm going to put this one back and carry on. Hey, Arla. Double shot. Whiting and a dab. Loving the plain lead rolling around. That was trundling around in the tide. A lovely whack. Left it a little while. And another little shimmy, which I reckon was the whiting. But all good fun. Loads of fish today. Definitely be coming back for some more action soon. Tiny little things, isn't they? Right, it's now half three in the afternoon. Sun's going down. The temperature is absolutely plummeted now. Uh, tides at the top. I just had another little one. A little and a bit tatty, but yeah, I've had a good day on the dab. It's been good fun. Plenty of fish, don't know how many I had, I lost count to be honest with you. Fair few dabs, one whiting, which is very, very good to be honest with you, the way it's been at the minute around here. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to put this one back, got my last bait out. And then I'm going to uh, mosey on home before this freezing fog sets in. And the beat of rush hour traffic and go home and have my dinner. So I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. Had a few fish on camera, it's been good. Plenty more to come from this YouTube channel, subscribe. That way you'll get the uh, alerts every time we put one up. But we've got plenty coming over the winter. And obviously going through next year we'll have the summer species as well. So keep an eye out. Hope you enjoyed the video and thank you for watching. Cheers.